Hello, I am Mohamed Murad, consultant of obstetrician and gynecologist at El Gala Maternity Hospital and member of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. This presentation is about the coronavirus infection, COVID-19, and pregnancy and childbirth. What are the objectives of our presentation? You should, by the end of this presentation, be able to recognize the maternal and fetal effects of COVID-19, underline the general advices to pregnant women during the COVID-19 pandemic period, discuss the antenatal care for pregnant women during the COVID-19 pandemic period, discuss the antenatal as well as the intrapartum care for pregnant women with suspected or confirmed COVID-19, and to explain the management of newborns of infected mothers with COVID-19. What is the effect of COVID-19 on the pregnant lady? Pregnant women are not substantial, more susceptible to viral illnesses. However, changes to the immune system in pregnancy can be associated with more severe symptoms with viral illnesses. And this is particularly true towards the end of pregnancy. Limited available data suggest that pregnancy and childbirth do not increase the risk of acquiring COVID-19 and also do not worsen the clinical course of COVID-19 compared with non-pregnant individuals of the same age and that most infected mothers recover without undergoing delivery. However, the normal immunosuppression of pregnancy can be associated with more severe symptoms as with other viral illnesses. The effect of COVID-19 on people. Currently, there are no data suggesting that there is an increased risk of miscarriage or early pregnancy loss in relation to COVID-19. However, maternal COVID-19 may be associated with intrauterine growth restriction, intrauterine fetal death, and neonatal death. Currently, there is no evidence that the virus is teratogenic. However, recent evidence has suggested that there is a possibility that the virus can be vertically transmitted. However, the proportion of pregnancies affected and the significance to the neonate are not yet determined. Also, there are case reports of preterm bears in women with COVID-19, but this is unclear whether it is always iatrogenic or whether some cases are spontaneous. What are the general advices that you should give to a pregnant woman pregnant woman during the COVID-19 pandemic. First of all, social distance. Pregnant women, women should increase their social distancing to reduce the risk of infection and should avoid contact with people who are known to have COVID-19 or those who have possible symptoms. Women above 28 weeks especially should be particularly attentive to social distance, minimizing contact with others. Stay home. Hand washing pregnant women should wash their hands regularly for 20 seconds at least 
with water and soap or alcohol-based hand rub. And they should not touch their eyes, nose, or mouth if their hands are not clean. Pregnant women should cover their nose and mouth with a disposable tissue or flex it elbow when coughing or sneezing. Pregnant women also should stop smoking and they should have enough beef and healthy meats. One of the very important issues is how to adjust antenatal care during the COVID-19 pandemic period. Pregnant women should be advised to attend antenatal care, despite being advised to otherwise keep social distance. And this is because studies have shown that if women do not attend antenatal care, they are at increased risk of maternal death, still birth, and other adverse outcomes. Wherever possible, cans and antenatal appointments, as well as required investigation, should be provided within a single visit in a one-stop clinic involving as few staff as possible. Some appointments can be conducted remotely, especially for women in self-isolation. And by remotely, I mean teleconference or video conference. However, at all remote appointments, women should be asked about well-being and, if in third trimester, about fetal movements also. If a lady is concerned about fetal movements or her well-being, physical attendance should be advised. During the pandemic period, a detailed history regarding recent travel, occupation, contact, clustering, and clinical symptoms should be acquired routinely from all pregnant women. Each hospital should have a system for identifying potential cases as soon as possible to prevent potential transmission to staff and to other patients. This should be applied at the first point of contact to ensure infection and the first point of contact may be the entrance of the hospital or maybe the reception. And this should be employed before even a patient takes a seat in the waiting area. Also consider outpatient induction of labor for low-risk women. Now I will start discussing care for pregnant women with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. Starting by antenatal care, then intrapartum care. Antenatal care for such ladies. First appointment. What about appointment? For women who have symptoms, appointments should be deferred until seven days after the start of the symptoms, unless the fever persists. Such cases defer appointments until fever goes. For women who are self-isolating because someone in their household has possible symptoms of COVID-19, appointments should be deferred for 14 days. Women should be advised to attend via private transport wherever possible. Of... 
each hospital should allocate a separate antenatal clinic for women with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. We should remove all non-essential items from the clinic room. Only essential staff should enter the clinic and should wear the appropriate personal protection equipment. And here I want to emphasize that the main cornerstone of combating a pandemic is protection of the health staff. If an ultrasound equipment is used, it should be, of course, decontaminated after each use. Transducer surfaces should be cleaned and disinfected according to the manufacturer's specifications, taking note of the recommended wet time for wiping transducers and other surfaces. Also, you may consider using protective covers for probes and cables. If a lady during pregnancy is admitted to the hospital with suspected or confirmed COVID-19, she should be managed with a multidisciplinary team, including an obstetrician, uh, IC specialist, anesthetist, and control specialist, microbiologist, neonatologist. Suspected cases should be treated in isolation and confirmed cases should be managed in a negative pressure isolation room. Critically ill patients should be admitted to a negative pressure isolation room in ICU. However, if negative pressure rooms are not available, suspected patients should be isolated in single rooms or grouped together once confirmed. Once COVID-19 has been confirmed, patients may be grouped in the ward. Of course, all attending medical staff should wear the appropriate personal protection equipment. It should be noted that young fit women can compensate for a deterioration in the respiratory function and are able to maintain oxygen saturation before they suddenly decompensate. So, a rise in the respiratory rate even if the oxygen saturation is normal, may indicate a deterioration in the respiratory function and should be managed by starting or increasing oxygen. We titrate oxygen to keep oxygen saturation above 94%. Chest image, especially chest is essential for the evaluation of unwell patients with COVID-19. And it should be performed when indicated and should not be delayed because of fetal concerns. Abdominal shielding, of course, may be used to protect the feet. You should apply caution with IV fluid management. Beware of fluid overload. Physicians should be aware that some asymptomatic pregnant women admitted for any obstetric condition may develop symptoms of COVID-19 later while in patient. And physicians should be aware of symptoms, mainly fever, respiratory symptoms. Also, if there is lymphopenia, they should ensure symptoms develop that the patient is not COVID-19. There are some reports that even after a period of improvement, there can be a rapid deterioration. Therefore, following, following improvement, consider an ongoing period of observation, wherever possible, for 
24 to 48 hours. And on the charge, advise the woman to return immediate if she feels unwell. What about corticosteroids for lung maturation with COVID-19? There is no evidence to suggest that steroids for fetal lung maturation cause any harm in the context of COVID-19. However, colitis should not be used to delay delivery in order to administer steroids infected with COVID-19. Now we will discuss how to care for women with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 during childbirth. Women should be advised to attend via private transport wherever possible. Staff providing care should wear the appropriate personal protection equipment. Women should be immediately escorted to an isolation room and only essential staff are allowed to enter the group. Once settled in an isolation room, a full maternal and fetal assessment should be conducted by a multidisciplinary team. Assessment of severity of COVID-19 symptoms, maternal observations, continuous CTG in labor is currently recommended for all women with COVID-19. If there is fever, investigate and manage as a case of intrapartum septic but also consider COVID-19 as a COVID. The mode of delivery should not be affected by the presence of COVID-19 unless the woman's respiratory condition demands urgent delivery. And this decision should be made in conjunction with ICU specialists. Shortening of the second stage, with instrumental delivery may be conducted in women who become exhausted or hypoxic. Given the lack of evidence to the contrary, delaying cord clamp is still recommended after birth. Elective cesarean sections should be scheduled at the end of the operating list. Emergence cesarean sections should be performed in a second obstetric theater wherever possible. The number of staff in the operating theater should be kept to a minimum and all must wear the appropriate personal protection equipment. With general anesthesia, all staff should scrub and wear the appropriate personal protection equipment before the general anesthesia is commenced because general anesthesia is an aerosol generating procedure. With regional anesthesia, all staff not required should stay outside until the block is effective. There is no evidence that epidural or spinal analgesia or anesthesia is contraindicated in the presence of COVID-19. Therefore, epidural analgesia should be recommended in labor in women with suspected or confirmed COVID-19 to minimize the need for general anesthesia if urgent delivery is of course, wherever possible, regional anesthesia is preferable to general anesthesia in cases with suspected or confirmed COVID-19. Miscarried embryos and placenta should be treated as infectious tissues and disposed of appropriately. Now I'm going to explain the management of born of mothers infected with COVID-19. The baby can be cleaned and dried as normal. 
it is recommended to leave the Bernix caseosa in place for 24 hours as it contains antimicrobial peptides. Neonatologists should attend deliveries on their normal center specific policy. Maternal COVID-19 alone is not an indication to do so. Not an indication to attend deliver. This is important to conserve the use of personal protection equipment. In addition, hospitals may re-evaluate the traditional policy for mandatory attendance by the neonatologist in the delivery room at low risk deliveries and instead allow the neonatal team to stand by outside the room to conserve personal protection equipment. If neonatologists are needed, they should wear, of course, the appropriate personal protection equipment. Neonatologists should not change indicated newborn care due to maternal COVID-19. There is currently no evidence regarding the need for mother-baby separation and the safety of breastfeeding. If the mother is critically ill, separation appears to be the, the best option with attempts to express breast, breast milk with a pump to maintain milk production. The pump should be cleaned after each use. If the mother is asymptomatic or mildly affected, rooming in as well as breastfeeding may be considered. Since the main concern is that the virus may be transmitted by respiratory droplets rather than breast milk, breastfeeding mothers should wash their hands and wear a mask before touching the baby and should avoid coughing or sneezing while feeding on the baby. In case of rooming in, the baby's cot should be kept at least two meters from the mother's bed and a physical barrier such as a curtain may be used. Infants requiring neonatal intensive care should be admitted optimally to a single room. However, if this is not available, infants should be maintained at least two meters apart and or placed in air temperature control. Where testing capacity is available, you need of mothers infected with COVID-19 should be tested. If testing is not available, however, centers may opt for clinical monitoring only. Testing infants who require neonatal intensive care should be performed to determine the potential contribution of COVID-19 to the neonatal Elements. In addition, testing will allow centers to convert personal, their personal protection equipment if testing is negative. Testing should be done first at 24 hours of age and then should be repeated and at 48 hours. For well newborns who will be discharged before, 20, before 48 hours, clinicians may consider not obtaining the second test, but it should be noted that there have been reports of neonates who tested negative at 24 hours and tested positive at 48 to 72 hours. Treatment of COVID-19 infected newborns mainly depends on adult patients' experience due to the few cases in newborns. Symptomatic and supportive treatment is the cornerstone of management. 
including the supply of oxygen, the maintenance of water electrolyte balance, as well as the maintenance of acid base balance. For infants with severe acute respiratory distress syndrome, high dose pulmonary surfactant, nitric oxide, high frequency ventilation, and extracorporeal membrane lung may be used. Infants who test positive but has no, have no symptoms of COVID-19 may be discharged home with appropriate precautions and plans for frequent outpatient follow-up contacts, whether by phone, telemedicine, or in office, through 14 days after death. Specific guidance regarding the use of masks, gloves, and hygiene should be provided to all care take. After hospital charge, a COVID-19 infected mother is advised to maintain a distance of at least two meters from the newborn. And when in close proximity, use a mask and hand hygiene for newborn care until at least seven days have passed since symptoms first appear. At the end of this presentation, I included two tables summarizing the safety of drugs used for managing COVID-19 during pregnancy as well as during breastfeeding. Important to emphasize that any drug even if it is not clearly safe to the fetus, should be used if the maternal condition requires its use. It's also important to state that no drug within the drug list for COVID-19 management indicates induction of abortion if used during And these are the two tables. Thank you for listening.